Hey everybody, I'm back with another video today. Um, another Vinyl Community Contest entry. And this is one I've been waiting to do. It's a very interesting one to, to watch everybody else's channel and show how they got interested in the music that they love now. So this is Jeff Witcher's uh, channel. It's his one year celebration and 500 sub celebration vinyl contest. So I'm excited to enter this. I'm excited to uh, show the music that kind of shaped my musical taste and also give Jeff Witcher that shout out that he deserves. One year, 500 subs, that's great. Um, and I enjoy watching his channel who, who shows multiple music genres and uh, does a good job of teaching. And uh, you usually learn something in each of his videos that he posts. So excited to do this. So he wants us to show five albums that shaped our current music taste. So I'm just going to walk through really my... Uh, my life of, of getting into certain genres and the, and the records and artists that help do that. I'm going to start with my first love, which was country music being a, uh, late seventies birthday, born in 78, all through the eighties, you know, growing up late eighties in the nineties, when you're really starting to evolve and you're in find what you love in music. It was country music, especially late eighties, early nineties. And my two favorites, were number one George Strait, which he was the king of country in the 80s, 90s. He had a little more competition, but he still was my favorite all the way through. So George Strait, this is his greatest hits. Um, I've shown this a few times, so I won't, I won't go into too much detail. But this is my man when it comes to country music. And then, his, but he's more of your 80s when he got started. The second one I have is another greatest hits of Alan Jackson, and he was. A Georgia boy, uh, n very prominent in the 90s and 2000s. Obviously, he's well known in, in Nashville. So, um, But he and George Strait were my two favorite, along with a couple of others. Willie Nelson, Keith Whitley, they're up there too. But on the radio, getting tapes, CDs, Alan Jackson, George Strait were my two favorites. So uh, those two records of the five I'm going to show today uh, kind of show where my love for country music started and continues today. Rock. So once I got into high school and wanted to get beyond just country, I uh, was obviously turned on to the Beatles when I was real young, but really fell in love with Led Zeppelin in high school. Still love them today. This is Led Zeppelin 2. Obviously, it has some of the songs that um, I loved most until I really got deeper into their discography and I kind of lean towards Led Zeppelin 3 as my favorite now, but Led Zeppelin 2, just as good. Um, probably better in some some cases, but Living Loving Living Loving Maid is just an awesome song, but I also love Moby Dick, Ramble On, Bring It On Home, very bluesy song on here. Uh, so Led Zeppelin, I mean, this album, whole lot of love. What is and what should never be? Lemon Song, thank you. I always say Led Zeppelin 3 is my favorite, but every song on here is ridiculous. So maybe Led Zeppelin 2 is my favorite. But I wanted to show Led Zeppelin because they are uh, my favorite rock band by far. And, you know, that helped me give other rock bands a chance. And although they don't stack up to Led Zeppelin, in my opinion, there are some other great rock bands that this kind of led me into as well. Rolling Stones, The Doors, and then your Southern Rock, Almond Brothers, Leonard Skinner, but I wanted to show Led Zeppelin for sure out of these five albums. Two more. Uh, this is one that I would call, this was kind of my bridge between folk and jazz a few years ago. Um, I, st I loved the blues. I loved folk, but then I was introduced into Fred Neal's world here and Bleeker and McDougal. If you don't know this record, please listen to it. Unbelievable. It's folk, but I mean, it's Americana. It's got some jazz uh, styling and tempo in it, which kind of leads me to my last record I'm going to show. But yes, Fred Neal, Bleeker and McDougal. This is definitely a record that broadened my horizon when it comes to folk Americana um, singer-songwriter stuff. Love this record. And the last one is the first hard bop outside of the very popular Miles Davis and John Coltrane that you've heard of when I really started digging into jazz, hard bop. 
uh, this was the first song that I listened to that spurred me into loving it completely. And it is Horace Silver's Song for My Father. So this was the first one I listened to and immediately I just started Googling hard bop jazz and came to Moanin, came to all the Lee Morgan albums, Hank Mobley, um, Miles Davis Kinda Blue, all those big records that you have to listen to and own if you love jazz. This is what started it all. And this whole record's unbelievable. But And I've shown this a lot too, so I won't go deep into it. This is Blue Note um, 4185. Song for my father, Horace Silver, and this was the song, the title track, that got me all into the jazz genre. So there's five records. I'm happy to enter this contest for Jeff Witcher, and I hope y'all go to his channel and do the same, because I like watching y'all's videos that have been posted for this uh, one-year 500-sub celebration contest um, to learn more about your musical taste. So country, jazz, folk, rock, my four favorites, along with blues. Um, but anyway, hope you liked that video. Until next time, keep spinning that next play.